Timberborn, aka the old Beaver game. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time for sure. Um, and it's been kind of inspiring to think about for getting back to live coding as I've done these beaver streams with zero prep uh, and just kind of talking through the game as it happens. And it's like, yeah, this is exactly when I wanted my live coding streams to feel like. And thinking through like, well, well what happened? <laughs> um, I think I was uh, building stuff perhaps um, a little bit too unfamiliar. Like I was trying to learn while uh, while going through it, um, which is fine. But at a certain point, like you have to kind of know most of the frameworks that you're using in that you're going to be talking about. Otherwise, there's just not going to be the same amount of, of flow, so to speak. Um, whereas this game, like I've I've built many many settlements in this game but not this settlement. And that's kind of kind of what I'm hoping to do with live coding. Um, I've built many, many programs, but not this program. And this program does have some stuff to learn, but I'm mostly not learning. I'm mostly um, kind of enjoying and in a state of flow and sharing that flow uh, is, is the ideal. Uh, so where were we in this game? So last week we started to build out, um, we tried out the new uh, large water pump, which was new in update five. Uh, we built out some power to power our observatory and we destroyed all our science labs because now we have this observatory, which does 10 science for an hour and a half compared to the regular lab, which is only one science for an hour. So much better output per beaver hour, as it were. Oh, and is this our very first bad tide? Or did we have one uh, last stream? I don't remember. But as you can see, the, uh, the nasty water is coming through. You can see it still powers the water wheels, which is hugely important, but it is going to kill off all of our carrots <laughs> and everything uh, on this on the side here is going to going to die off as the toxic water uh, irrigates irrigates with uh, toxicity uh, our plants. Um, but that's okay. We got plenty of plants um, inland. We have our potato farm over here, and we have our dandelion farm over here. So we're going to be totally fine on food. And yeah, this is uh, this is the newest one of the new changes in update five. It's it's going to be a big update. Um, it's adding this this bad water in. Uh, so recently they changed the it used to be instantly kill the plants but now it's like only when it gets to 100 percent uh concentration level oh is it 50 percent concentration level that it instantly kill the plants so you have a, a little bit of of leeway if you just get splashed with the water now uh, which is nice doesn't actually destroy your farms but it doesn't provide a uh, regular irrigation you can see that yeah, this, this pine tree over here is drying out. It's going to die in 12 days if it doesn't get water. Um, and this bad tide only lasts five and a half days. So it's going to be, this tree here is going to be totally fine. Uh, we are on normal mode, so don't really don't have to worry about that too much, about stuff dying off. Um, yeah, some of these birches died. Uh, I think they have a little bit shorter of a lifespan. Uh, without water. Uh, so what building projects do we have going on? We need to get this this tree out of the way so we can build out our power. Uh, 
uh, we're building down here to get rid of this tree so we can also continue building our power. And it's good that we got our inland farms going. We're going to totally survive this uh, bad tide, no problem. is going on yeah i make sure to not play this game uh throughout the week i play a, a different game throughout the week um i'm playing on the other faction the iron teeth uh for my for my private play time uh yes we got i guess we could build more food storage these are kind of packed to the brim we got plenty of science Got... Oh, we're kind of low on logs, though. And it's not for lack of trees. I guess it's for lack of lumberjacks. And I guess that means we need more beavers. <laughs> we only have uh, one empty bed, so that means we're basically at capacity. So again, the way that the folktales, uh, the hey, default uh, beavers... Um, make more beavers is uh, at night there's a chance for them to have a baby if there's uh, more than one beaver. And I'll do that up until there's no more room for beavers. If they use minions voices. Uh, they do they do have voices <laughs> when you click on them so I wonder if that's where we were stopping off uh, last stream let's see so we have we've been using kind of the basic lodge for now um, we can get a slightly better slightly more efficient with the triple lodge so let's just go ahead and do that we definitely have the science points to do it <laughs> inspector says they sound just like the minions yeah with the year coming to a close i'm just so grateful to all the new folks that i've met this year who've been uh, showing up and supporting me and liking the stuff I do. I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful to have folks to echo ideas off of. Um, and uh, I better say it now before the end of the year actually comes. <laughs> or, uh, or I guess like the... Uh, the chapter just said, just say it when you think about it. <laughs> Don't save it for a quote unquote better moment. I wonder if I move this, if I move this over one tile. So right now, this whole path here is just so this guy can get here. But that would be like one, two, three, four, five, five more trees. So yeah, I think I'm gonna move this guy over. Put it there, and then we put the water dump there. Then these paths can become trees. So we need them to build more houses and it looks like they're not quite building houses. I guess it was nighttime. So uh, what are the builders up to? They are building. Oh, they're out here building the, um, the water wheels, which are honestly perhaps not as important as getting more beavers. So let's up the priority on those two things. And I don't want 
my trees to die of drought, so I'm going to make the fluid dump the highest priority. Uh, Bitspector says, water wheels seem a little sophisticated for beavers. Uh, this is... <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? Perfectly fine. Uh, this... <laughs> This is uh, supposed to be post-apocalyptic. The beavers have evolved now that all the humans have died. And that's what the uh, the ruins are supposed to be. There's some ruins. Yeah, they're supposed to be like uh, old human junk piles or old human like cities. Um, Yeah, they can't drink the water straight from the river either. They have to uh, pump it, which which filters it. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty pretty cute uh, lore. Okay, what are the builders up to now? Let's just uh, go up to triple speed here. Oh, look, they finished the house. Nice. So now we have 10 empty beds. So hopefully they will uh, make other babies. Oh, and uh, so, th <laughs> so this is this is a thing that uh, I guess it's basically a mistake that, that I made. Um, I set the fluid dump to be highest priority because I do want that to finish up fast. But in fact, the beavers didn't do that. They worked on the house first, which was uh, second highest priority. Why did they do that? Well, because underneath the fluid dump is a platform, which is just set to regular priority. Uh, so I kind of hope that they fix this or, or do, do a tweak. I have some ideas for what I would suggest them do otherwise, but until then, uh, make sure from top to bottom, everything is uh, priority. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you'll get stuck like I did there. Um, good thing we noticed it before we actually ran of water in here. See, there's still plenty of water in here. The viewers are able to shower, which gives them the wet fur bonus, which adds just just plus one to their wellness, and if wellness of course adds up. So right now, this one's at well, well-being 11, although up here in the top left, we see we're averaging nine well-being across our colony. And if we get better working speed, with the next tier being 15, we get faster walking speed, which we're almost close to hitting the next tier of, and life expectancy. Which means they, uh, they live longer, you don't have to wait for a baby to be born for that beaver to be replaced when they die of old age or uh, <laughs> for an accidental uh, dynamite explosion. Oh, looks like we had uh, a bunch of births. So yeah, we're down to eight open beds from, what was it, 11? Yeah, we should prioritize these these guys. Why aren't they? Uh, they're all done with the lugs. They just need to uh, finish it up, put the finishing touches on it, which is uh, exactly what happens. They stand there and they touch it for, there you go. And you can see that guy touched it and now it's done. So now we have more campfires uh, because we have all these beavers and not enough campfires for them. Um, yeah, at some point we'll get more of these, more of these going in, but I do want to increase the population a little bit first. Although I guess, uh, we could put a shrubbery right here. We've been doing shrubberies. Where is it? It's under decorations. Put a shrubbery right here, and then 
it gives the aesthetics uh, bonus within, you know, one tile, so three by three or nine total tiles. But the one thing I found out on YouTube is that if you just put it by your houses, then when they go to sleep at night, that that'll be enough time near the bonus for it to last throughout the day, basically. I wonder if that's actually true. I wonder if they've tweaked the numbers so it doesn't last the whole day yet. Um, it does feel a little sad to only have decorations by your houses and not elsewhere. Uh, another note about live coding, I will say Timberborn crashes way less than Xcode. <laughs> <laughs> Xcode crashes, you know, multiple times per stream usually. Um, don't have the exact numbers on that, but it, it's <laughs> certainly a lot more than Timberborn. Okay, so we're filling in a little bit more logs here. <laughs> Fitspector says time for an M3 Max. I'm not sure if, uh, does Xcode crash less on a faster computer? I feel like it's some other issue, not the not the power of the computer, but I am uh, certainly curious there. Okay, so we got seven babies. Gotta wait for them to grow up before we can assign them to do stuff. And let's check on our power project. Oh, it looks like they finished the wheels. Now we need to, I guess we'll pause it. Let's see, how do we wanna hook these up? Looks like we have our drivetrain kind of going beneath like a second tier below the walkway here. And I really love this pattern um, because it allows you to see the beavers walking above. If you put the, if you put the gears, the power shafts above and have them walk below, you don't get to see the beavers walking around. And what's the point of playing the game then? <laughs> Uh, Bitspector asked, does Xcode crash when not streaming? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. There's always, always something going on with Xcode. Even when they say, oh, we have more stability, uh, they still find it more ways to add instability, it seems. Yeah, so this is the uh, rubble from the stairs. When you delete something, you get a little bit of the resources back. In this case, it's basically all the resources save for one plank. You can confirm that here, the stairs is one log and four planks. When we deleted it, we got one log and three planks back. So if we do that, We'll, um, we'll be all hooked up uh, power-wise. So right now these, um, you can see they have zero demand on them. They're not powering anything. Whereas these here are contributing to the overall power of our colony. Inspector asks, that's enjoyable. Uh, which, which part? The exo crashing part? No, that's not enjoyable. <laughs> Still don't have any beavers that uh, need a job yet, um, but I was thinking we would perhaps uh, increase our storerooms for food. So let's put it on just regular speed while we think through this. So I'm thinking it might be time to upgrade to large warehouses, which are quite a bit more uh, expensive, 60 logs, 80 planks compared to the medium warehouse, which is only 15 tiny little logs. Uh, it only holds 200 though, whereas this holds six times the amount. Six times the amount 
for three times the space uh, for many times the cost. But I guess you get the space savings there. Uh, Bitspector asks, is there an Xcode alternative that doesn't crash as much? Uh, you can use just a straight up text editor. Um, but for doing particularly iOS coding, that can get a little difficult because of the integrations that Xcode has with the the iOS frameworks and with the simulator. Uh, but it can be done. I've done it before. Um, and now that you say that, that would increase my enjoyment. <laughs> that would increase my enjoyment. I just need to get it set it up. They have the, uh, it's called the LSP, I believe. LSP is the feature that a lot of text editors have for editing. Um, because like text editors used to like build in language support to the editor, but then it like, makes it harder to build new editors because you have to like support 15,000 different languages. So the LSP is the language server protocol, which the language themselves can kind of say like, oh, here's a server that if you're running on your computer, then your text editor can make requests to this server and get context information about your code. Uh, so you can use whatever language you want. So there is one for Swift, and I've tried to get it set up a long time ago when it first came out. It wasn't quite successful, um, but that would be that would be a fun thing to try out again. Especially because other editors are just more customizable than Xcode. In Xcode, you can only change the font of your code. You can't change the font of the uh, the rest of the UI, <laughs> um, which I, you know, I have I have fonts that I like to use. Uh, VS Code, though, you can't change the font of the UI either. Though I know in IntelliJ and JetBrains products, you can. Um, and in Nova, I don't remember if you can do it in Nova or not. I would, I would believe it either way. Uh, but I guess as far as like um, having a better backdrop for code, because like that's the other thing for code, it's like it's it's static text on a screen. It it doesn't move. It doesn't animate. Whereas like any video game you play, it's just more fun to watch and participate in as both the person doing it and the person watching it. You've got this beautiful, gentle animation of water wheels. You've got beavers walking around. You've got the flow of water. And you know me, I love, I love watching flowing water, if you know anything about me. Right, so we're talking about getting uh, bigger storerooms for all of our food. So how do we want to do that? Let's see, maybe we'll stick it here. And we're gonna go have three space between them. One, two, three. I guess we can't build this one quite yet, uh, but we'll we'll do that. We'll do that soon enough. Tuke says, "Hey, how are you doing?" And we're coding stream. Um, I will be doing live coding again uh, soon. Just uh, not probably not this month, to be honest. Um, taking a break to focus on some other things as. The main reason is my client is super intense right now. I'm uh, having a lot of fun, but it is really intense. So I don't have uh, as much energy as I typically would to do uh, live coding. Uh, certainly not compared to when I was only doing live coding and uh, <laughs> just burning through my bank account. <laughs> uh,
Yeah, this is a game called uh, Timberborn. You're doing iOS freelancing. Um, this one's more of a consulting role, and it's uh, more back-end focused. Um, so, uh, so not AWS for, I mean, not iOS. <laughs> Not iOS for this uh, client. Yeah, so we can also say like what we want to store in these warehouses. Um, yeah, we'll make wheat later. Uh, but right now we're gonna focus on finished uh, food products just to have lots of stuff ready to go. Grilled potatoes and carrots. Tuke says, is it right that the market is really hard for mobile developers? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm really bad at career advice. Uh, if anything, I would just say don't, don't do whatever I do if you want to have a good career in whatever you're trying to do. Um, uh, my career is in shambles, or I wouldn't really call it a career. It's, uh, it's what I did. <laughs> there are other streamers that do give career advice, though. <laughs> BitSpectre says, what's a career? I feel like that's like what we were talking about earlier, like Raphael versus Leonardo of Raphael had a career of make painting, get lots of money. And I thought that's what my career would be, make an app and make lots of money for a client. Uh, and that's, that's not exactly my story at the moment. What's work? <laughs> work is doing something that you kind of like doing, but not as much. Uh, but someone gives you money, so you're like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess I could do that for money. And then they say, if you don't have money, you don't get to eat or have health care. And you're like, oh man, I guess I really need some of this money stuff. Uh, that's, that's what work is. <laughs> I forget which activist said it, but it might have been Frederick Douglass or Martin Luther King Jr. They said, oh, something along the lines of, <laughs> uh, disclaiming my memory here, that work is uh, modern day slavery. Because you need to do it in order to live. You don't really have a choice. But these beavers, they share all their food with anyone in the colony. Even if you're not a farmer, you still get to eat the food. Uh, I love this game. <laughs> See, where are all our workers going? We got all these, all these that were born and grown up. But we still, we don't have any uh, beavers without a job. see we can overwrite we're over, been overriding this with with oaks don't need the birches anymore we have enough lumber flow we can afford to do the more efficient uh oak trees once again the oak tree takes 30 days to grow and gives eight logs whereas the birch takes nine days to grow but only gives one log um so sort of days per logs oak is the best uh, but when you're starting the getting started with the game Having a birch grove just to have lumber coming in uh, is kind of part of my uh, standard start right now. Yeah, so all these trees died during the bad tide, so Forester is taking a while to replant all of them. Should I build another Forester to help replant? Kind of got plenty of logs for the moment. I guess I can switch one over. Do I really want to have them right next to each other though? I feel like that's kind of 
not very space efficient. Uh, let's try here though. It's like, oh, I could put more trees here. Also has space for sunflower seeds. And these other ones will be building up too. Uh, are they still building those water wheels out here? No, they finished those. They finished that dam. So we have all the water flow going through our water wheels now. Yes, yeah, so continuing to stabilize our food. Um, you can see that the uh, up here, like we had basically the same amount of carrots, potatoes, and sunflower seeds. But now that the sunflower seed warehouse finished, you can see that the bar is like much less because it's a percentage of how much storage you have for it. So it's helpful to like glance to see everything's kind of filled up to the top. You know, you're you know you're all set. All these dead oak seedlings. Oh, there we go. Now we got some folks with uh, some empty hands. See, they're all waiting for the trees to grow again, I guess. So yeah, you should prioritize this one and uh, get those trees replanted. So they don't switch tasks in the middle. They're probably gonna, these builders are probably gonna deliver to whichever one of these they're working on right now. So I could see, I see a few kind of open next steps. Um, we do want to eventually clear out this little lip of land here so we can have all of our warehouses all together um, just for space efficiency. Uh, what else do we want to do? We want to eventually plant wheat to get bread and all that jazz. Uh, what else do we want to do? There's also uh, more stuff down the science line that we could work on. Uh, including robots. Uh, we haven't unlocked any metal yet. Okay. Uh, I think I remember we kind of looked at some possibilities for where we were going to get metal last stream. And I remember picking one, but I don't think we actually did any building toward it. So there's one mine down there. Mines are usually in the corners of the map. Yeah, there's another mine way out there, but it's kind of kind of far. And there's a mine right there. Not too far away at all. With uh, some piles of ruins over there. So the iron teeth, the, the other beavers, they use iron, they use metal a lot more um, than the folktales. So the folktales do do use them. Yeah, I think I think this is gonna be the one. It's just so much closer to our colony. Yes, we're at kind of path level fifty three here. So perhaps we'll start um, building a path out that way. And then stairs, can zoom in a little bit. Stairs up the cliff.
And then what? And then... Should we go around the cliff? No, I want to go kind of in a directish line. And because we aren't penalized for going up, um, I think that that does make it faster. And then let's see, is this two up or three up? Oh, it's like just two, let's see. Yeah. Salt planted. <laughs> okay, cool. There we go. So, who has the empty seat? Oh, it's uh, one of the, the builder buildings. Okay, that's fine. So I guess what I'm thinking here is this is this is still this is pretty far away. Um, oh, we don't see it on the path. But if you put the path here, you'll see you see the number getting a little bit yellow there. It's says district one with a distance of 48 there. It's kind of yellow. Uh, and this one here is at 61. It's getting kind of red. It's at 67, even redder. Uh, at Either 70 or 71, you get a red exclamation point saying, uh, you probably want to have these buildings this far away from the city center. Um, and that's just so that your beavers can continue to be happy beavers, <laughs> get access to all the amenities within a reasonable amount of time. You can see everything over here is bright green and things farther away get a little bit redder. Uh, so, I think this is going to be kind of our intro to districts here. Um, we can have a second district, uh, District 2. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll name it something like uh, Metalworks or Mining Town or Pittsburgh or something good like that. Um, but there's no limit on, on building. As long as there's pathways there, the builders can build it. So I guess what I'm doing is before making any kind of district, I am telling the builders to build the stairs uh, to get there. And then we'll take it from there. We are going to need a lot more beavers to uh, support that, though. And where do we get more beavers from? By making more houses. Yeah, this housing complex is showing it's uh, not that efficient design, huh? Let's see, what can we do? It's probably going to want more houses too later on. See, am I allowed to build over? Oh, I'm allowed to build over our shrubs now. That's amazing. Used to be you couldn't do that. <laughs> that does make it a little bit easier uh, to get all your bonuses for your weavers. Complete those paths. Let's see, so if I build one here. Maybe I want to move the, uh, the campfire over one. It's really these, like, this column here. If this were moved out of the way, if we had dynamite. We could build uh, better houses there. And dynamite does require uh, metal. At least the factory does. And we'll get more to that, more to that later. But for now, let's see, so if we put one here, 
Yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be a little cramped. Um, but I suppose that's okay. We can do something like that. And I'll put the other one here in a moment. Stranded? How do you get stranded? I see his toe sticking out. What are you talking about? You are not you are not stuck. Mr. Beaver. <sighs> so I'm going to uh, delete <laughs> delete the house so the beaver can get out of it, get free, and rebuild it. So with help, they've been able to plant a lot more trees. And how is our path going? Oh, they finished the path. That was super fast. Okay, so from here is 117. Here is 62. So if here is 60 and here is... So 120 is going to be like over here. So this is this is basically the the halfway point here. So this is kind of where I want the the district crossing to be. See, I could put, I could put it up here. It's a little bit far at 64, it's in the red, but I feel like there's just a little bit more room up there. And we don't have uh, dynamite yet, we can't really terraform right now. I, I do really like my little, my little curve here though. Yeah, so let's go ahead and build a district crossing upstairs here. Go ahead and unlock it. And place it down. As you can see in the text, uh, the district crossing will balance goods between the districts on both sides. Uh, so what's kind of basically going to happen is all the food store that we have here. The beavers that work here are going to carry the carrots to here, and then there'll be places, we'll build some uh, stuff on the other side for the carrots to be placed. Uh, I mean, basically, yeah, the food and water is going to be sent to this district, and our plan is for metal from this district to be sent back uh, to our main district, which I guess we can rename. Rename it Capital, I guess, as if we're playing Civilization. So this side of the district crossing has the little uh, no path um, icon. This building isn't connected to district center by any path. That's true. We have not placed the second district center yet. Oh, we have a building lax workers. Let's take care of that first. Oh, it's just builders and it's the lowest priority one. I really wish there was a way to turn off these warnings when it's like lowest priority. Like if I have beavers, tell them to work here. If I don't, I I don't care. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, let's go ahead and pause that to make the, the error go away. And where was I? Oh yeah, we're talking about districts. So where do we want our district center to be? I guess kind of right around here. Maybe upstairs. Because where else are we going to go? We're going to probably har try to harvest all these ruins. So we want it to be a kind of accessible from there. But the main feature is going to be the mine. And probably we'll do our, probably do our smelting out here too. 
uh, turning the scrap metal into usable iron bars, which we can use for building things, etc. Um, how am I going to connect power out to there? So my power currently doesn't go through the town at all. It just kind of goes through the river. Um, so yeah, I guess we could kind of continue that pattern. We could kind of continue building the power like through the river and then just have it come up and over, go alongside the path. Uh, yeah, that could work. Do we want to do any farming out here? Uh, possibly, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Let's plop down our district center. So if we do that, and this is 44 away, we could do it a little bit farther. I don't like how cramped it is right here. Let's, uh, I, I like the space around it on the other side, but there's no way through here exactly. Well, yeah, I guess we put, we could put stairs there if we need to later. Okay, so do we have any spare beavers in our capital district? Uh, we don't. We have 14 babies, though, so we will be we will be getting more soon. Uh, building wax workers, right? We don't have any workers on on this side yet. We're waiting for some folks to grow up. Uh, so you can see this um, this panel here to manage the distribution. You click into it and see everything that's going on. And say like always, always bring food and water and logs. And planks. Most beavers want those things. That's great. And that's true. So it's kind of a, a pretty good default. Um, and for the other side, we want to always bring in... The, we never want to import the scrap metal. We only want to bring in the actual useful metal bars. So that is... Oh, right here. Three building stock workers. Oh, I do want, I do need a worker here. Uh, let's take one guy off of lumberjacking. And I guess we can pause this side and pause this while we kind of wait so we aren't flooded by um, announcements we don't need. Let's see, so there's two ways to get scrap metal. Uh, kind of the basic recipe is there's ruins, and you gather them with a gathering flag. And then you have the smelter, uh, which converts it from scrap metal into iron bars. And then you use those iron bars in any any regular recipe, just like you would any other building material. And you can see there's kind of a limited amount of ruins. Uh, they're kind of scattered all over the map, but it is it is finite. And I was so happy when they made the mine which does allow for infinite uh infinite scrap metal and you'll see that the folktales can also use the mine as as science they can just be chilling down there doing experiments i guess the opposite of the observatory they're looking inwards uh, to get 20 signs an hour pretty good uh, I've never relied on that recipe personally. Um, I'm usually building a mine because I want the scrap metal uh, and I basically just use uh, observatories for science. 
The observatory just makes so much science. I uh, haven't quite had a problem needing more than an observatory or two. I think one game I made two observatories. Um, anyway, we just started a drought. That's all good. Uh, oh, we just lost four people to old age. Crap, I was going to move those people over to our new district. Okay, well, while we're waiting for folks to grow up, maybe we can give this district a name. Uh, we had Mining Town, we had Metalworks. Those are all kind of uh, older names that I've used too many times. I did mention Pittsburgh earlier. Uh, let's try that. <laughs> You can see that because of the um, the district crossing, the the beavers bringing goods there. That this all this place already has thirty water, uh, thirty wood, a bunch of carrots, etc., and planks. So, how do we want to plan out this district? Um, we do want to clear some of these trees. We can also use those trees to build out the district. Mark those all for chopping. Uh, what's your greatest inspiration for doing something? I guess what got me into this game was I saw someone else playing it, and I'm like, that's not what I would do. I cannot stand how they're playing it. I need to do this myself. And <laughs> that's how I started playing this game. I guess that's how my subway app got inspired. There were so many, there are other subway apps in New York City, but I could not stand I, any of them. I'm like, I can, <laughs> I need to do this differently. Okay, we've got three free beavers. I think that's I think that's enough to start a colony with. So, with you can click on the the district center and click on migrate population to get the migration uh, thing. And what I like to do is just set just set a minimum. So there's going to be always three beavers here. If one of them dies, it's gonna it's gonna bring some more over. And they don't have anywhere to sleep. Uh, <laughs> so we should... Well, let's go down to one speed. Let's build them uh, some houses. Let's see, where do they want to live around here? Um... Yeah, maybe, why not up on the hill? This should be the priority to get uh, your own lumber and then start building a house, which I guess would be the second priority. Um, then while that's happening, we can start planning out the power transfer. So I guess we have our water wheels here and those are connected to the other water wheels. And I'm thinking we kind of want to just Kind of bring our water straight on through. Uh, sorry, bring our power just kind of straight on through. I'm thinking the water. Um, with 
the actual water land isn't that valuable anymore because of the possible bad tides. And we haven't done anything to mitigate um, where the bad tide flows yet, uh, which is certainly a way to do it. So let's see. I guess let's send the power back down into the water. I see an empty tile right here. There we go. And I guess perhaps just build this along the shoreline. Get some elbows in there. And then from here, um, maybe we'll move this dam like farther downstream. Like we built this pretty early in the game at the shortest spot. And I could make the power kind of go up and over it, or I could uh, just move the dam uh, farther downstream, which is what I think I'm gonna do. Kind of right there, right at the end. Just one builder will have one one log guy and so we should have one guy in here mm, to carry stuff. Actually there's nothing quite to carry. They can get it themselves from here. Let's put that guy also on on builder duty. And then yeah, the way goods get sent over is they got to be put into a warehouse. So we can do that for each of our foods, the carrots, the potatoes, and the sunflower seeds. We can do that for water. Though perhaps we'll need a a bigger water. And they'll be making their own logs for now, uh, but eventually we will probably want some storage for those things as well. And let's, uh, it's kind of a lull there, so let's go back up to triple speed. Folks, oh, but they, um, a whole bunch of deaths just happened. Yeah, we don't have any uh, power right now because the water's not flowing. Um, that's okay for now. We do have other options for power. We can make windmills. Um, I guess right now we're kind of focusing on getting this, uh, this other district up and going, though. Oh, and they can't reach these spots because these things are in the way. Okay, if I delete you. And... Move you over. And they can get to here. Uh, these will also be hard to get. <laughs> um, yeah, 
think these are gonna just go just go straight on through. Maybe we'll have the um the smelters kind of like right here. Eventually, we're going to want power to the main part of the district anyway, so... I think that's okay. Um, oh, so to demand gears... Uh, they don't have any gears here. So there's two ways to get gears. We can say, uh, always import gears, or you can make a little warehouse and say, put the gears here. And then you'll also have gears. Uh, two ways to do the same thing, basically. And now do we see... If we wait just a little bit longer, will we see them bringing some gears over? Closet. Yeah, they're carrying gears. <laughs> yeah, you can see that the gears are starting to be uh, added to that structure. This guy doesn't have anywhere else we can put the logs. Okay. Um, so what's next over here? I guess kind of building a path over to get to the uh, scrap metal. Let's see. So we have a path go like that. I suppose. Put a little stair situation right there. Eventually, we will yeah, maybe maybe right here start start doing that. Um, nothing to do in range, so I guess that means that he chopped all the trees. Not exactly true. I see one. I see five logs uh, chilling there. So we'll, we'll wait a moment there. building is lacking workers this guy um so i pause this one because uh, if i just straight up delete it the logs will end up on the floor and only builders can pick them up um and when it's like this uh anyone can pick it up uh which is why i'm leaving it this way it's been a while so i'm going to click on the prioritize my haulers which should help get those logs uh out of there so we can uh safely delete it and go along our way. Um, we are going to have to build scaffolding so that they can actually build this uh, drivetrain here. Um, I guess we could do it. I guess we could do it here too, to be honest. I guess it's nighttime. They're not doing anything right now, in fact. How's our main colony doing on water? Uh, we still have a bunch, but with 
all this growth, I could use um, some further water storage. Which has been mostly depleted. Do I need more water pumps? I might need more water pumps too. Just don't have that many beavers. Let's see, so this guy picked up all of the logs. Can go ahead and pause him on that. And I will unpause over here. Oh, he's, uh, he's gathering scrap metal. Okay, so we'll take, uh, take one guy off building for this little district. And Javinda here will be delivering, delivering goods from the crossing to the warehouses. So we're still thinking about getting power up here. That's, yeah, look, they finally got the logs. We can go ahead and delete this one. And then how do we want to go up the wall here? Let's see, so I guess we need to be up a little bit already. Smelters. Um, I was thinking maybe here. Um, I don't think that would look too pretty. <laughs> uh, and we're going to want power to the main district soon. I mean, at some point, anyway. So well, let's put this on single speed while we're kind of in thinking mode. could have the drivetrain go over the path, but I, I tend to not like that as much. Because uh, then you can't see the beavers walking. So I'm going to do like a... I'm not really... Not really... Like we have enough space, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. We can afford to be a little space inefficient uh, on a huge map like this. And I do love space efficiency um, in general in my life, uh, but in this game, I just feel like it, it does detract a little bit from the overall uh, aesthetic. Let's see, so let's plan out these smelters. Let's start with putting them there and there. It's a little too close to the path. There's not, there's not that much give there. Um, do you want to put them down here by the mine? Yeah, that that might make sense. Because eventually we'll be taking scrap metal right out of the mine uh, to the smelters. It'll be like uh, there and there. And then, how do we want to get our power down there? We could go down and around. Oh, hey, look, we um, we finished that part of the 
dam over there so we can turn this into just a regular bridge. And let's go ahead and prioritize that because that was just kind of just breaking a path that the beavers were using. Uh, but let's connect that power while we're in there. Or did I do that already? So you can do, you can hold option and then scroll till I kind of see below. Um, this is not the best because there's only one uh, level here. Uh, let's see, where do we have a bunch of stuff? Maybe the houses? Yeah, so here's over here. So if we hold down option and then scroll, And see it kind of peels away the different layers you can see what's what's under it oh yeah especially down there along our, our drivetrain and you can also do that kind of by dragging this thing here because they haven't finished building this yet. Okay, well, I hope they finish that soon. Uh, meanwhile, let's continue planning out where we want the, the power to come through the city. I guess that really like ties into the experimenting thing that uh, Rick talks about is that the only cost in this game for experimenting is your time. There is a, there's a little bit of a resource tax, but not really. Or not, it's not particularly significant, I guess. over just a little bit mm, actually I think that's fine because yeah it'll connect up right there and actually you can stay kind of yeah above sea level like that above their heads so they can walk under if they need to do maintenance back there or something here we go that's where how we're gonna power our smelters. <laughs> okay, so they got food, they've got supplies. They're gonna need more beavers soonish, but they don't have power yet kind of the biggest thing that they're waiting on. They do have an extra beaver here. Do they have a baby? I bet they had a baby and it grew up already. Okay, so let's go back up to triple speed.
I guess one thing I'm noticing with the beaver movement is I have this kind of this rectangle here where the crossing is here or through here. So I wonder if I should like connect it a little bit. Like maybe have a path that goes straight through here, a path that goes straight through there and then another sort of crossing across. I wonder if that would make it a little bit more efficient. Oh, and how are they gonna build this? I guess we need to build a little bit more scaffolding so they can reach it. Let's see, I wonder if they can reach it from there. If not, we'll build one more. Uh, I can remove these two. Now you'll notice that this, <laughs> this little bit of rubble is out of reach. Uh, but what you can do is you can kind of pause the game so you don't accidentally build anything. You can kind of wall, make a little wall of, of levees and then build over it and it, it'll combine <laughs> it'll combine all the rubble. Uh, so you can shove the rubble somewhere where the beavers can catch it. And you can see they've been picking up some of the planks there already. Still not reachable, eh? I thought they could build at an angle. I guess they cannot. Okay. Maybe it's because there's it's an angle and this thing is in the way? I don't know. Sometimes I see them build at an angle. How's this going? This is looking pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I guess the builders are busy building out the... Uh... So this guy is full on scrap metal. I can't do any more. We could build storage for the scrap metal, but this guy should probably just help out um, building, building the powertrain. See, we do have a bunch of extra beavers here. We can increase the minimum to six out here. Send the baby back, uh, I guess. Yeah, because now somebody's sleeping outside. That's no good. Set the minimum to five, I guess. And how do I send one beaver? I just send the baby right for now. connected so we can delete some of this uh, scaffolding and uh, do the trick to uh, make it all reachable oh did it go did it go under here it did <laughs> oh well whatever not a big deal we have an abundant amount of logs and planks. In okay, case so we got 10 extra beavers here. How are we doing on water? Water could be a little bit better. I guess we should build another large water pump. Yeah, 
that is a lot of beavers to support. And does this colony have any other building projects? I don't think so. I think... I think this will be the most important thing without, without telling them so. And with day eight, we only have probably like uh, just a few days until the next uh, drought or bad water announcement. So I do want to get do want to get this going. Okay, well, it's in the injury bed, so that's fine. So there's a lot of empty space here. I'm thinking we can use it for windmills. We can use it for further farming. Once we have dynamite, we can shape the land just uh, just uh, that much better. I feel like I should make some more log storage. So you can never have too many of those. We're actually behind on carrots. Yeah, I guess the carrots have were kind of impacted by the bad water the most. Maybe I should build another farm here to help um, soak up all the carrots. this guy prioritize uh, carrots since it's kind of between the two he might wander over to the potato farm uh, which is fine just I like if there's no carrots to do then they'll go over there but I do want them to focus on carrots so I have two um, two farms I can set one to be harvesting one to be planting nice balance out the actions Finishing up this power transfer. Guess I could start chopping down um, these trees here. trees out of the way plus we're going to use that those logs not windmills yet, all the way across the landscape, soon to our smelters.
Yeah, they used all the resources here, so we can just go ahead and delete that flag. Should be starting to pick up some of these logs though. Is that true? Yeah, that guy came. There we go. here eventually. Drought approaching. Okay. What's our water situation look like? Oh, we got, we were, last time I checked, we are at 1,000, now we're at 2,000. So I'm glad we built that extra, extra water pump. Uh, let's do, um, two more water tanks though. Not sure if they'll complete it, um, but having the storage available will be nice. Uh, the last, the largest water tank uh, does require metal, you'll see that last little one, so we're not quite ready to build it certainly have that on our mind. Underground pile. Yeah, so we could put a lot of logs in an underground pile. And it might be time to do so. So this this holds 10 times the amount of the, uh, the, the large pile. Uh, which we have over here. What a question of where should we uh, stick it? Everything seems like prime real estate right now. I don't want to put it here because what if I expand my houses here? Um, maybe out here with all this other all this other storage stuff. Yeah, so these hold the same thing that um, the large piles do. So I'll set one to logs, one to planks, and one to treated planks. Do we need that many treated planks? I don't think so. I'm going to set it to be logs also. <laughs> um, And maybe stick another, make one of these uh, treated planks once these finish up. Oh, these are all done except for the scrap metal. Okay. Let's put someone back on the scrap metal. Get that cooking. Okay, coming back over here. I did make some good progress there. And that'll help just 
get more flow through our forests. Uh, time, money, value, and all that. The tree is growing, then the next, the be next batch of lumber is already on its way. I do like playing this game with, uh, <laughs> with abundance, as it were, of just having way too much of stuff. Oh, they did finish those tanks and in fact was able to put a bunch of water in one of them. So I'm glad we glad we got those out. Good job, team. So what was the other thing I was thinking of? Oh yeah, I remember what I wanted to build. So speaking of all those of all those uh logs, uh we haven't quite opened this last monuments tab yet. So in here are a few monuments that give, um, we can kind of see what they look like. This is it's kind of a uh, little beaver holding hay. This is a uh, beaver family, I guess. And the last one, a fountain of joy. This is a little fountain. So if you click on a beaver, scroll down under awe, they, the monuments give like a nice big, nice big wellness bonus. Um, three is bigger than anything so far. Oh, I guess there's, there's two other ones that are pretty big there. Those require participation. Uh, the monuments just be around it, which is a nice, nice big boost. So this is 200 logs, 400 planks, and this one needs metal and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, that's nice, this only needs planks and iron teeth. This one is obviously slightly different. The cost uh, includes metal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we can get this one going. It's always just where do we want to put it? So it's within seven tiles. So this does not cover all the houses unless we build two. We build it here that does cover all the houses. It does limit our creativity, I suppose, going forward. But we can always move things around later. I think that's a fine spot for the monument right in the middle of the housing district. In the loose sense of the word district, not the... Uh, but the, this is the district center meaning of district. And after that, I think it might be time to get some windmills going because these droughts with no power are getting a little, are getting a little annoying. So there are though the baby windmills that give 150 horsepowers for really cheap. And there's the large windmills, which we have certainly enough science for, uh, but they need um, that last one there, paper. Uh, we haven't done that this game yet. Now let's see, what's paper? Let's deal with paper right now. Uh, looks like there haven't been any changes. It's just the old, it's the old paper mill. Just need to find uh, somewhere to put it. setback action and there's still room for another factory right there
or I could put it over here. Um, but it doesn't really matter that much. I guess one thing I found for my enjoyment of the game is is overthinking it too much does <laughs> does make the game less fun um, because of how you can just move stuff around when you need to um, without too much cost. Uh, there's a nice bump from the, uh, from the monument now that everyone's going to sleep under it. Because you can move stuff around with the... Uh, you don't get penalized by the cost. You can destroy stuff and get most of the resources back. Just moving stuff around when you're ready uh, feels better to me than thinking thinking through the placement way too hard. Uh, and as as you build your colony, as you build your town, you're going to want to move stuff in different spots as you've tried stuff out in, in other games. As patch notes come out, you want to move stuff around some more. Um, yeah, overthinking has, uh, when I try to overthink in this game, like plan out perfectly from the beginning, it's, uh, it is not as enjoyable for me. Oh, cool. They finished, uh, these guys. This guy does not have a job. Let's put him in. This building is not connected to the district center by any paths. That is true. What is our situation here? Yeah, he can he can just go there. Cool, and I'll leave this one on pause for now. We'll start with just one smelter. Oh, and right away they are going to need a, a medical bed as the beavers get hurt. So I'll just stick one right there. And then how many beavers total are we going to need out here? Um, well, as we get stuff built off, we don't need the builders as much. Um, yeah, I think we can actually just unpause that, go down to two builders. Um, but it'd be nice to have a little bit more hands for the district crossing. So let's build, um, let's build some more housing. So yeah, we'll build a little platform there for this guy. And then we can also take advantage of this, this lip in the cliff is we can build the the super the triple lodge without needing any stairs or anything because of that lip yeah i think i'm gonna do it and as soon as this gets built we can set a new minimum for beavers in this area and then we can have maybe two or three harvesting. We'll have two smelters going. We'll have extra hands over here. And then we can start planning out the stuff behind that. Which is probably going to be dynamite. <laughs> That is going to be a little bit of a ways out. We can get this brazier of bonding going. Now this has a little bit more range. This is 10 tiles, not just 7. So we have a little bit more freedom about where we want to stick it. And we can stick it up, uh, up here and still hit every house. So I think I'm going to do it. That was 3,000 sign points. Now we're back into being able to see all of our digits. But this will show just how nice the uh, observatory is. We only have two folks in the observatory, too. We have not been hurting for science at all since we built it. Haven't been waiting for anything science-wise. And I think I'm going to continue to leave two guys in there. Actually, we, have all, we do have a few extra beavers. And as we're getting to this point in the game, the science costs are ramping up. So maybe, maybe I will just stick uh, two more guys in there.
Cool, so how is things going on over here? Two builders, these guys are cooking. Um, oh, they finished all those, so let's put a minimum. Uh, do we, I don't think I have any extra beavers over here anymore. We, uh. They're all, they're all busy right now. Flooded building, flooded building. I wonder why it's flooding. It didn't flood other times. Maybe I just didn't notice. that it was flooding. Anyway, the water went away right away. So totally fine. And I guess we're about to, like, oh, I'm maybe about ready to unlock windmills, but we don't have enough science for them quite yet. Um, where would we put these windmills? I guess there's lots of uh, empty space over here. If I remember correctly, they... Um, I can't even unlock it to test it out. I think they have to be... Does have one tile between them or two tiles between them? I don't remember. But I guess we are about to find out. That was like 150 extra science in like a moment, so yeah, we'll have 1400 in no time. Uh, this guy made a bunch of paper and has nowhere to stick it. We should give him some place to keep all his paper. Oh, and this we can turn over to treated planks because we have the plank storage uh, in here. Oh, we're, are we running behind on planks? We're running behind on planks. Oh my goodness. Okay, I guess we need some plank factories. over here to wait for somebody to grow up I guess this is all done we can take that yeah I guess let's go down to uh, one builder this is this can be oh we I blinked and now we're at 1400 okay so let's take a peek at this Okay, so it needs two in between. So as they finish up, or after they finish up, then we'll break the, uh, the chain. But until then, we'll get this Gonna have some windmills here, and we'll put more elsewhere also, uh, so that to make sure that they bring the papers over, uh, I'll put a little uh, warehouse that accepts paper. And then come back to the main district and See if we can get some paper storage somewhere. This guy made 20 papers and has nowhere to put them. He could be making more papers, uh, but can't. So, uh, kind of wasting his, uh... Oh, this is where all of my planks are going. 
Okay, that's not so... <laughs> that's not so alarming then. I uh, thought I ran out of planks unexpectedly. <laughs> Fitzpector says, are you in the computer age yet? Um, they do get robots later, which uh, are still, still a little bit away, away from... Means we can probably delete these two extra plank factories um, pretty soon. Just help get our supply back up. Oh, thanks so much for the cheer. Hope you're having a wonderful evening out there. Thanks, dude. I really been appreciating your your support. Thank you so much. Turns out the the bit thing makes a noise. <laughs> uh, Bitspector says it's about to get real rough. I have about two hours worth of work to do before five outside in the barn. There's an event going on later than it was supposed to be. Are you having an event in the barn? Oh, cool. That sounds like fun. There's no barns in this game. That would be kind of weird for beavers to be taking care of other mammals. <laughs> Some riding training camp, uh, says Bit Spectre. Some riding training came up to give lessons to the clients. Oh, fun. Or, or not. <laughs> I I did not enjoy the riding that I did. I got sore super fast and <laughs> and that uh yeah, I guess you have to get used to it or something, which was uh certainly not going to happen here in New York City. <laughs> Spectre says, I'm not much of a rider, but I've had horses for 13 years. Oh, right on. I have not had that many horses. Oh, and here's our bonus from the uh, from this statue. Now they all went to sleep under it. Up to 17 on, on average. Some, of course, may be uh, above or below that average. Let's check on Venjo here. He's up at 19, the average is at 16, 17. He's been to the campfire, he's been to the shrub. Yeah, this brazier of bonding seems to be like going down pretty fast. I'm not sure if it lasts the whole day or not, but the farmer monument, that's like, hardly going down at all. But he's sitting right here. Oh, where he's sitting is affected by the farmer monument. But if you look closely, it's just off by one tile for this thing. So yeah, I guess the day is just finishing up and there was still plenty of, um, there's still plenty of bar left. Okay. Need more monuments. Yeah, when they go to sleep, they fill back up on the monument. See here, it's going back up. Here's Benjo. He's in, ah, the house is back there. He goes and sits over here because we have nothing for him to build. Uh, right, I was trying, <laughs> trying to figure out where we're going to store paper. Kind of need 
need another... I'm thinking we're going to put the dynamite factory over here. So you need like another like good storage district in the printer. <laughs> if I get rid of these these berries, we could put some storage here. Yeah, let's get a start on that factory. And what's also new in update five is you can flip buildings now by pressing F. Um, that didn't used to be a thing. So that's super nice for me right now because I can just, I can just stick the factory right here, right in front of the stairs. And what is the recipe for it? Oh, it uses bad water now. Uh, in update four, it used paper <laughs> to make dynamite. Uh, but now they use bad water, which I think makes sense. Um, just need to figure out how we want to get there from here. The inspector says, going to lurk some more and try to see if I can get started. I don't want to be out in the barn until 7 to 8 at night. Right on. Good luck. Thanks so much for stopping by, and thanks again for the bits. Just going to stream about uh, 20 more minutes here-ish. Going to be ending at 5. Yeah, so we have the pine resin storage here. Maybe you want to put the other storage uh, kind of nearby here. Put all the storage together. Thanks so much. And we'll put the paper, yeah, put paper here. And then another one for dynamite, I guess. So we have the explosives factory. Now we just need some bad water to feed it. And where is there a bad water source other than during a bad tide? Oh, there's some right over here-ish. Kind of on the far side of our Sunflower farm. Okay. So what we can do is potentially just build over it. We'll tell them to not replant that one. And then if I put one here... Uh, the sixth bridge is not quite going to get there, but we will be able to get there with um, a combination of bridges. So we're halfway there. Or we could do like a... Uh... So that'd be a... So it looks like it's nine tiles across. No. Eight tiles. So that would be two fours. Which we could build right now. Oh, the sunflowers are too tall for just one height. Oh boy. Okay. So some plants you can build over with, with just one tall. Um, but some flowers, I guess, are two tiles tall. 
Yeah, I guess if you zoom in, you can kind of see that. So if we were to put another one on top, yeah, then it's then it's green. <laughs> okay, so uh, how do we want to do this? Delete rubble. Use this tool to delete rubble. Resources stored in the rubble will be lost. up like that, well then we need the three to jump over. Oh, the three and the four, I guess. Okay, fine. And then we can have a little uh, bunch of bad water pumps over here to pump the bad water so you can make explosives so we can do our storage. <laughs> Let's see, so how do we want this to look? I don't think I wanted to go straight back down right away. Maybe it'll go down like both sides, kind of like this. for folks to walk so need another level of that bad water pump uh, honestly two is probably more than fine to get started with blocks from the other district? I believe they will. They were able to build the dynamite factory, which does take, uh, yeah, 30 metal blocks. So yeah, they have them. We did set up the migrations correctly. <laughs> started and we still don't have our windmills or do we what's the situation where are they oh here they go they are still working on them haven't even finished one almost done though oh it's behind on planks that, that monument really did eat all of our planks but I do have uh a whole bunch of planker guys. Okay, well I guess by uh hopefully by next drought we'll have we'll have something going. So what's also important to realize is that the uh the bad water does also turn off during droughts. Uh so you don't just get free power all the time. <laughs> Which is uh 
how it was designed earlier. I think it's an okay change. Yeah, so they finished building the suspension bridge, which needed the uh, metal blocks. And I guess we should have some fluid storage for the bad water. is not the antidote bad water here we go building is lacking power yes yes we know oh we have one we have one going okay i guess while there's um Power is off is a completely fine time to. Oh, and I should uh, prioritize that highly. Now is a good time to redo these joints. It's not a whole lot going. Uh, they have six people with nothing to do. I guess we can put them in as builders and have them start working on the mine. Oh, we don't have enough science for the mine. Yeah, as soon as I say I haven't run out of science, it's just one observatory. Now uh, we've bumped into the science wall a few times in a row here. So we want to build another Observatory, um, I mean, it's really just a power issue. Once we got our windmills going, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a rush here. But otherwise, we are just kind of chilling out, waiting for... Waiting for the power to come back on. And actually, if we highly prioritize this right here, maybe we can get like <laughs> one horsepower to each building or something. are all waiting for planks, planks, planks. There we go. Supplying 152 <laughs> across. Uh... Yeah, and I guess as the wind goes up and down, um, the windmills will be, you know, more powerful or less powerful. And when the beavers go to sleep, there will be zero draw uh, on a power supply. So what's super powerful with folktales is you have a bunch of windmills and this last guy here, the gravity battery, um, where the windmills, it kind of helps, uh, what's the word, amortize? Helps amortize the, uh, helps mitigate, is that maybe the more correct word? Mitigate the fluctuation of power from the windmills because you can store it in a gravity battery. And then when the beavers go to sleep, they kind of charge back up if you get wind at night. Building wax workers. 
Where did all of our workers go? I just built all those houses. Oh, we had three deaths right in a row. Oh, we do have five babies kind of growing up, so maybe there's no need to panic. Oh, it's these, uh, it's the two extra planks I, I built, I guess. How are we doing on planks? Uh, we're doing fine enough on planks. Um, yeah, let's put these as lower priority. Uh, maybe just pause those, because we have... Yeah, those two do need some... Do need some workers. Oh good, we got some folks grow up. Aruma and Gajudius. Yeah, so I guess there's still no bad water for them to harvest at the moment, but that he is fine. Yeah, that one little windmill. So this one's getting 39 little HPs. 33% uh, it says. I think it just means it just goes slower. Um, even though it's spinning at the regular speed. <laughs> ah, we got two windmills going. don't have any water oh there's only one guy in here okay that's that's why they can help distribute the water chopping anymore because there's no lumber there to chop. Again, just waiting for the end of the drought and or for the windmills to uh, finish building. You can see that sometimes there's no wind. Is the so this one costs four thousand science points, and this costs oh only four hundred. Maybe we should start building a few of these to uh, help out with our power situations. Oh, they all need they all need planks, don't they? Uh, I guess we should get some plank storage. just so that the, uh, they have somewhere to put it that's a little bit closer by. Another one almost finishing up. Yeah, we can turn off we have so much, so much lumber. Uh, we can certainly turn off one flag. So 
So we just had a few more grow up, but we still have a building lacking workers, which I'm uh, a little surprised by. Okay, looks like it looks like it sorted out. Looks like it was just a little uh little just algorithm needed to catch up a little bit. I've seen that happen before. somebody in the sick bed. Okay, so I guess we need more um, injury beds in this district. Where do we want to stick them? I think these all need... Oh, just one plank. Not so bad. get those beavers feeling better. yet? No, water flow is, is starting to come. We have this water flow, so these guys are doing a little bit of pumping, filling up the bad water tank, which soon, yep, this guy has some bad water, so he'll be making some explosives real soon. And we can start using the explosives to clear some space. Go ahead and unlock it. Now that's not going to be reachable. Oh, I think that's reachable. That's going to be, yeah, that's going to be one height. So that is going to be reachable. The explosives have not been made yet. What's this guy working on? Come on, we're counting on you. Cool, so we made just enough. And there they are. We can go ahead and detonate them. And now we have room for another warehouse here. Inside of the, the pattern that I want to use for the for the warehouses. Well, that's gonna be all for today. Thank you so much for joining me for Timberborn and Living the Creative Act. Uh, it's been so much fun. Uh, throughout the week from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., I do post my scenery streams and play some music online while I'm working for my client. And that's been a ton of fun just seeing everyone and having some chill vibes uh, throughout the work week. Uh, hello, YouTube. Thanks for your support for my Timberborn videos. Uh, I'll be making more as long as they're getting, as long as they're getting the views. Um, of course, my website is at fullqdeveloper.com with my iOS projects, my Android projects, and my open source projects, as well as uh, some nifty facts about keyboards. Uh, the schedule will post as soon as I end the stream. Um, but yeah, 10 to 5 for work with me. And then Sundays for Living the Creative Act and Timberborn. 
I don't see you before the end of the year. It's been a, it's been a fun year. <sighs> and uh, smash the follow button if you're having fun.